This is going to be a pretty in-depth tutorial on the JavaFX menu structure. We're going to show you how to create a menu bar with menu items. Then we're going to go into how to add the graphics to the menu items. We'll discuss submenus, separators, and grouped menu items. These are how to create a toggle group inside of a menu. We're going to show you how to do custom menu items and how to handle, handle selection events from your menu. We're going to do it all in the FXML first, and then towards the end we'll show you how to do the same thing in the controller. So let's get started. In order to get going with our menu, the first thing we need is a menu bar. So let's create one of those. This is where our menu is going to live, and inside of that we need our menu. And this is going to be um, the top level items. So we'll give this guy some text. He's going to be our main menu. And then let's just create another one and he'll be an about menu. These are just some examples. Now inside of here we actually want our menu items. So the default menu item is the menu item and this is just going to be something that you select and then you can register for the action that, um, that occurs. So let's make this one be a uh, save. And then we'll make another one that's um, exit. And then the other thing that you can do is you can actually create a type of menu item that's a checkbox menu item. And this would be good for on off type um, behaviors. So we'll just create one of those just to show you what it looks like. And let's take a look at uh, what we have now. So here we have our two top level menus. We have the main and the about menu. About doesn't have anything in it, but inside the main you see we have our save, exit, and our checkbox that is the turn on off um, checkbox menu item. So the next thing I would like to show you is how to load an image into your menu items. You might want to have a little graphic there. I have a little PNG in my main uh, folder uh, that I'm going to use to demonstrate this. So I do have an image ready to go. You can do this image loading in, in uh, several different ways. Most people will probably do it in the CSS file, but we haven't gone over that yet. So I'm just going to do it right here in the FXML, and then I'll show you how to do it in the controller later. But um, in order to do this, we actually need to load the image first, and, and then we're going to need to reference that image later in the FXML. So we're going to define a uh, little block here that's going to contain our image view. And we need to make sure that it knows that we want the... We want the FX image view in there. Now we need to actually load the image inside of the image view. So we're going to create an image and we need to load its URL. And it knows that there's the diskette um, image available. So we're going to grab that. We do have to put the little at symbol in front of it. So let's do that. Now we actually need to give it a name that we can reference it by. So we'll just call it. Um, image view save. Now we can reference this in our menu items now and so we're going to load this menu into the graphic and we're just going to reference the name that we had created up, up above. Make sure that you do create this um, image view block before you try to reference it or you not, are not going to have uh, success. Alright so let's take a look at what this looks like now. So in our main menu now, we have a huge uh, save button, but we can fix that. We just forgot to define its fit, width, and height. Let's try 20, and let's do a fit width. Um, you know, a little bit later we're going to get into Scene Builder, and you can do all this in Scene Builder too, but I think it's really important that you understand how this code behind uh, works instead of just relying on the graphical GUI builder. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. So now we have a much smaller and much more appropriate um, diskette image for our save. So that's how you would load an image um, into our menu in the FXML. So the next thing I want to go over is nested menus or submenus. And these are really easy to create. You just um, create another menu inside of your menu. So we'll just call this submenu here. And um, 
you know, we can create menu items in here. So let's do a uh, menu item just to show you what this would nested structure is going to look like. All right, so let's run this so you can see what it looks like now. So here under our about menu, you see we have a submenu with a submenu item. So that's really all there is to it, to creating submenus. So let's create a little another um, little define section, and this is where our toggle group's going to live. And it needs a name, so let's do that. This is how we'll reference it again. Okay, so now we can create our um, grouping of radio buttons. So these, these are actually called radio menu items. And so let's just um, give it a couple of names to show you what this is going to look like. Now we need to join all of these radio items into our toggle group or they won't behave correctly. So what the toggle group is going to do is it's going to do all of the code behind necessary to deselect the other radio items when you select one. And this is a lot of code. So this is actually a really nice feature that you can do here. So we're going to add all of these radio menu items to this toggle group. And the other thing that we're going to do really quick is we're going to define a separator from our menu item to this um, radio uh, toggle group so that it just looks a little bit nicer. So let's just do that real quick. This is just going to be a little line that's going to delineate the different sections in our menu. So here's our about menu and you can see now we have this little line that makes it uh, a little bit more organized in our structure and we have our three different menu items and we can select one and you see that it deselects the other ones. So this is really nice um, option for being able to have radio buttons in your menu. So the next thing I want to show you is actually how to create custom menu items in the Java FX. This is actually really cool. A lot of people will just use this to insert existing controls such as putting a slider in your menu and while that's pretty pretty useful and neat I'm going to show a different technique so in this case what you can you do is you can actually create custom um, controls and embed them here in your menu so for example if I wanted to have a text box or text field and allow the user to input a value and then apply that value and have all that be embedded in the in the menu I can do that using custom menu items. So what we need to do is we need to set its content section and we're going to create an HBox and inside the HBox we're going, this is going to create a layout that goes horizontally. So inside of here we're going to put a text, a text field and this is going to be, you know, where our user would input um, some text. We'll just have it start with the default value. And um, now what we would want is we would want to have the but the uh, a button for the user to um, push to apply this selection. So let's do that. And um, so let's take a look at what this looks like inside of our menu now. So now we have a section for the user to input a number and apply it. And, you know, we can make this smaller so we can have a, a max width, you know, so that it doesn't um, take up quite so much room. Um, and this, you know, is a, is a pretty, you know, simple example, but if you, you can really get creative with this and do all sorts of things by creating custom menu items. And I just wanted to show you that you can put more than just an existing widget in here, you can actually create your own templates and put them in here as well, which is really rather rather um, neat feature. So now that we have all of our menu constructed, really the only thing left to do is to handle the user actions upon clicking uh, the menu items. 
and this is going to look very familiar to you. All this is is the same on action um, method that we've used before and buttons. And so we need to handle that in the controller. So let's um, just create a little um, on action event uh, handler real quick. quick. We want to make sure we click the FX event there or things are not going to work if you choose the swing one. And so this is where you would handle, you know, that you would have your menu handle, you know, uh, code upon, um, you know, when the user selected a menu item. So we'll just print something out here. Okay. So um, now we can go back to our controller and we can hook these two up. And when we run this, you'll see, I'll go ahead and bring up my output window here so that you can see um, when the item is clicked. So here we had, we had our save button hooked up. So here we say menu save clicked. And that's really all there is to it. You could go through and hook up your on action for all of these menu items in a similar way. So the only thing we have left to go over in our discussion on menus and JavaFX is to show you how to do the same type of thing in the controller. So I'm going to comment out all of this menu structure in the FXML, and then we'll go to the controller and do the same type of thing. Here um, I do have a reference to our top level VBox that we're going to add our menu to. I have a little create menu function. This is where we'll build out our menu structure. We're going to need a menu bar just like we had before. This will be our top level um, container for our menu. So we'll create that. And then we'll need our menus, of course. So we had a, a main a menu. And it looks like it picked up the Java Swing version. We definitely want the um, FX version. I'm not sure why I did that, but we definitely want the Swing, the FX version. Okay, now it's happy. Now I'll create another one. This will be our about. You do have to be careful with that because it sometimes will pick up the Swing version and then you know things won't work right. Okay, so we have a couple of menus. Now we need to add those menus to the menu bar. So we will get menus and we'll add all. And uh, the order that you put them in here will dictate the order that they appear. So we also need to be sure to add our menu bar to our top level V box. So let's grab that. We need its children and then we'll just add the menu bar to that. Okay, so we have our menus, but they don't have any items in them. So let's generate some menu items real quick. Um, so we'll do our um, save that we had before. Uh, and we'll just, you know, put save in here. Then we'll generate the um, exit. I think we had an exit. And um, let's go ahead and put our checkbox uh, menu item that we had in as well. And that's just checkbox menu item. I was an on off kind of deal. And we put some text in here. Okay, and again, you'll need to add these menu items to the menu, and so you would that you want them to appear in. So we'll put them in in the main menu, and you would um, get items and then you would add, you could add them individually or you can add them all. We'll add them all since we have them all um, created. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have now. You'll see it looks pretty much like what we had before. So here's our main and we have, you know, our menu items that have been added to the main menu. So as far as our graphic is concerned that we had in our save button to do that, we would need the image view. And 
just be sure that you know where your image is located. And in my case, it's um, in the main, you know, uh, directory structure, but you might have it someplace else. So you'll have to reconcile that. Uh, in this case, let's see that was so that would be git class. I get resources stream, and then I want to put in the name. Okay, and then you know we need to scale it a little bit, otherwise it'll be huge, just like it was before. And we can use the uh, set fit height and width, uh, just like we had previously. To make it a little smaller. Now we need to add this guy to our menu item. So that was the set graphic. Now let's take a look at what this looks like. So now we have our save icon right where it belongs. So for handling event registration, all of these would be done similarly. Let's just choose the menu item save. We already have our uh, method down there that's ready to handle our event. So but this time we're going to set the on action just like we've done before and we'll give it a reference to the menu clicked and you could handle all of these menu item um, selections similarly and now when we run this it would go on here and handle whatever code we wanted to occur upon action. So I hope this gives you a good idea of all of the things that you can do with the menu and JavaFX and please be sure to subscribe to our channel.